This is actually a very powerful lesson in our deen. People will do wrong. Even people of taqwa, Allah describes not in fa'alu, idha fa'alu. It's not an if, it's a when. <laughs> it's not if they do something wrong, it's when they do something wrong. It's an inevitability. Human beings will do something wrong, whether they're muttaqeen or not. We're not perfect. We're not angels. The question is, what do you do after you make the mistake? You know, when someone does something wrong, especially people that are close to Allah, shaitan is waiting for them to make a mistake. He's trying hard to get them to make a mistake. And once they do, he says, you have just been lowered in the sight of Allah. He basically wants to repeat his experience. It's like he was lowered in the sight of Allah. So he wants to make you feel like you've been lowered in the sight of Allah. You have no hope left. How are you going to turn back to Allah now? After disobeying like, like this, you hypocrite. You should stop doing whatever you're doing. It's all for show anyway. So he will tell you in your head, why are you wearing hijab anymore? You just watched a movie. Right? Why are you just doing it to show off to people? Take it off. You don't need that anymore. Don't, be a sh- don't, don't make your situation worse. Why do you go to masjid to pray? After you've been hanging out with those guys over there and you've been using filthy language or you played a video game for 12 hours. Straight. Right? Why are you even going to go to the masjid now, you hypocrite? Just to show people that you're religious, don't even go anymore. So shaitan will use your mistake to convince you to not do the things you're supposed to be doing anyway. And in your head you'll just say, because I, I don't do this, why should I do that? It's not, it's not like it counts. I don't want to do it to show off. I want to have the right reasons to do it. A lot of people come to me and say, Brother, I want to wear hijab, but I just want to have the right reasons, you know. I'm not quite ready. Or I want to start praying, but I want to have the right reasons. I was like, you already have the right reasons. What are you, why, are you, why are you playing word games with yourself? <laughs> Stop kidding yourself. You want to do it? Do it. No, I don't want to do it because my parents want you to do it. Well, you know it's not your parents. You know it's not your friends. It's not, it's, it's, the reasons are clear. If you're going to do it, do it. I'm not saying you're a bad person or this or that, but don't kid yourself. Be honest with yourself. Just be honest with yourself. Don't say, I, I don't think, you feel I'm not courageous enough. People will say things, people look at me funny, I don't feel, I feel kind of awkward when I wear it. Fine. Those are legitimate. At least you're honest. At least you're saying, but I'm not quite sure if I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm not, I don't, I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> you know what language that is. You know, that's the shaitan messing with you. That's all that is. Okay? May Allah give people courage to do the right thing. May Allah give, uh, you know, our, our guys the courage to lower their eyes, watch their mouths, not become a different person among different friends. You know, to, to not do that, to not be a different person when you're by yourself, to remain on taqwa. But these are, these are hard things to live by, easy things to talk about, right? For all of us, myself included. But th- this is, uh, 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 if you can do that, then you haven't fallen into the trap of shaitan. Shaitan wants you to get away. You know, if you're in the middle of sin, just saying Allah will hurt. Just saying subhanAllah will hurt. You don't think twice, should I say Alhamdulillah, I'm in a movie theater, should I say Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah over here? Should I say that? Well, I'll wait. That means taqwa is missing. If you can say Astaghfirullah and walk out, that's taqwa. That's when you know you got taqwa. Maybe your friends dragged you into a concert. Jam it and all of a sudden it's something, this is wrong. You saw the sun going down, it's Maghrib, it's like, how can I be doing this? Now, you're, you're, in your head there's an Astaghfirullah, but it hasn't reached here yet, it has you know. At that point, if you could just say Astaghfirullah and walk out, that's Taqwa. <laughs> because you're not saying it to anybody else, you're saying it to him. When you and I make mistakes, we have to come to terms with the fact, where are you going to go? Who are you going to run to? How, who are you avoiding? The one you, you, you can't be avoided, you know. So Allah says, فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Then they ask forgiveness for their sins. Well, when يَغْفِرُوا ذُنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Who's going to cover your sins other than Allah anyway? You're trying to hide from Allah? Where are you going to go anyway? Well, when يَغْفِرُوا ذُنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُسِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا But He has a condition for these people of taqwa. The problem isn't they won't make a mistake. The problem is, one, they won't remember Allah immediately. Two, they won't ask Allah immediately for forgiveness. They won't realize I've got nowhere else to turn. They'll forget that when the time comes. And three, this, 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 this is the critical thing. They won't insist upon what they did. Sarratun is a bag that is tied. It's got money in it, it's tied up. It's sarratun, it's called. Okay? Something that is, you're not letting go of. Because, you know, you tied it to protect it, and you let go, you hold it in your hand, you don't let go of it. Because it's got money in it. It's sarratun. Okay? Asarra yusirru in Arabic means to insist on something and not let go. You know, you're addicted. You can't let go. This is israr with asad. لَمْ يُسِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا They didn't insist upon what they did. They did, didn't insist upon what they did. In other places in the Qur'an, Allah complains about a certain group of people. He says, وَكَانُوا يُسِرُّونَ عَلَى الْحِنْثِ الْعَظِيمِ 
They used to insist on the ugliest sin, the nastiest sin. These are people, even if it's a small thing, they don't insist on it. This is actually a review of a lesson already taught in Baqarah. You know, بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَتُهُ It's a review of that lesson. Whoever earned a sin, and his sin took hold, it encircled him. It took hold of him. How does a sin take, one sin take a hold of a person, they're addicted to it, they can't let go of it. Allah says this is the process of a person. He does something messed up, she does something messed up, astaghfirullah. Two weeks later, same exact thing, ah, astaghfirullah. And as they say astaghfirullah, they're in their head, I'll probably be doing this in two exact weeks. And then again, I'll say what again? Astaghfirullah. It's like they've scheduled their, their sin. I know I'm going to do it anyway, I can't help myself anyway. In other words, what Lam Yusirru Allah Ma Fa'alu is saying, they haven't caved into their sin, they haven't let their sin win. They haven't said to themselves even subconsciously, yeah, I'll be doing this again anyway. I've come to terms with the fact that I'm a, a continuous, uh, you know, an addicted sinner. They haven't done that. They haven't, they haven't given up on, on themselves like that. And those are games being played with Allah Azza wa Jal. You will notice inshaAllah when we get to Surah An-Nisa, there will be a review and a continuation of this particular lesson. People who keep making tawbah as a habit. And they keep doing sins, and they keep making tawbah, and they keep doing sins, and they keep making tawbah. It's become a joke to them. وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا And they didn't insist upon what they committed. وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ While they full know what they're doing. They're the ones in fact that know what they're up to. أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ Those are the ones. Their compensation is forgiveness from their master. وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And multitudes of gardens, at the bottoms of which rivers are going to be flowing from right underneath them. They'll remain in it permanently. Remember, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ It already started with, this Jannah has been prepared for muttaqeen. And here's what the muttaqeen look like. And those are the people that are going to get Jannah. It started with Jannah, it ends with Jannah, and it's got sinful people in the middle. It's amazing. It's just because, what do you do with those sins? What's your response to those sins? You use those sins, if they happen to even get closer to Allah, and develop the right attitude towards taqwa, and towards tawbah also. أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ And what an amazing compensation. Ni'ma is one, one of the verbs that's used in Arabic called uslubu ta'ajjub, huruf, uh, uh, af'alu ta'ajjub, verbs that express amazement. This is Allah expressing amazement at the quality of reward that they're going to get. It's not a believer looking at it and saying, wow, ni'ma dar, what an amazing house. Allah is saying, ni'ma ajru al-'amilin, what an awesome compensation of those who put themselves to work. What an op- awesome compensation of workers. Amila ya'malu amalan fahuwa. Amil, Amila, he worked. Amil, a worker. Those who put themselves to work. He didn't say muttaqeen, mu'mineen. He said amilin. What is that suggesting? Get to work. Do something. Change yourself. Ni'ma ajrul amilin. Notice there's also a contrast between lam yusirru ala ma fa'alu, fi'il, fa'ala yaf'alu fi'lan, and amila ya'malu amalan. Fi'il and amal. Fi'il is mindless. Breathing is a fi'il. Listening, hearing is a fi'il. Listening is a amal. That's a good example of understanding, okay? Uh, listening is a amal, but hearing something is a fi'il. When it's something's done, you don't require any conscious effort, that's fi'il. When it's intended, it's conscious, you put an effort into it with intent, that's amal. Put your, make the intention and put yourselves to work. That also implies all the deeds we do, we should be conscious of what we're doing, even the good deeds. 